G'day, you bloody dickheads, Vaping Bogan. Back again for another Ridgy Didge review. Hope you're all having a fucking perler. Got another AIO, an all-in-one device. This one is from Aspire, the Nautilus Prime X, following on from the Nautilus Prime, I think it was. So this is the X-rated version. <laughs> it's a little single 18650 all-in-one type setup. So you've got like a little tank kind of sunken down here in the top of the mod. Does up to 60 watts and has a variety of compatible coils as well as couple of RBA options. So it'll do the original Nautilus coils, the BVCs, but also do the BF coils, which is what I've got in here at the moment, little BF uh, 0.6 ohm number. But as I said, there's also an RBA or an RDTA type uh, rebuildable tank option, which is what I've got in this red and black version. So a little single coil uh, RDA type thing up the top with a tank underneath you dangle your wicks through. We call it an RDTA, sort of rebuild dripping tank atomizer is the correct term. So I said the first one I have a little 0.6 ohm uh, BF coil in here at 18 fucking watts a bit more of a mouth to lung type uh, feel. Tasty, tasty little fucking uh, low wattage job. And then uh, this one here, I've got a 0 0.3, 0 0.25 ohm, 0 0.25 ohm single alien coil. I'm running at 50 watts. Plenty of fucking clouds there and uh, the flavor pretty damn good as well. So we're gonna go through all the ins and outs, the bits and pieces on this guy, how the uh, mod actually operates, but obviously the options you've got uh, in how you run it, whether it's pre-made coils or rebuildables, uh, whether it's BF coils or BVCs. But before we can get to all of that shit, as always, let's crack a fucking beer. Got a Norwegian beer today, dickheads, from Amundsen Breweries, located over in Bruggeri. I think that is uh, how you fucking say it. Uh, quite an interesting beer. It's called Parallel Worlds, and it's got quite a mixture of flavors. We've got a blueberry and orange coffee cake pastry sour. Say that five times fucking fast. Doesn't say too much about the beer itself, but uh, I'm expecting a sour, but also pastry kind of bakery feel to it. Let's just see how she fucking tastes. Let's drink a beer. Have a look at the colour on that cunts. Bright as a baboon's ass. Was not expecting such a vibrant fucking beer. I guess that's what you get when you mix blue and orange together. You get kind of a purpley red. Boy, interesting fucking aroma there. Definitely can smell that bakery, that cake. You can smell the cake. As well as a, a citrus sourness. Fucking cheers. Fuck me, that is a bloody smorgasbord of flavours. Wow. 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 It's like, wow, wow, wow. It's like, wow. You get coffee and bakery, but then you're getting sour and fruity flavors. It is uh, quite the mashup of, uh, of tones there. Real obvious coffee flavor, very much a, a bakery vibe in there. But then after that, you get that sour, tart tingle on your tongue, the fruity blueberry sort of flavors, and then uh, orange and citrus as well. That is complex. Fuck me. That is uh, very nice. <laughs> Yeah, fucking wow. I don't reckon I've had a beer that's had uh, quite so many different uh, flavors mixed in together. Uh, a savory almost with a sour and then a, a sweet kind of bakeriness. Fuck me, that is, uh, that's top notch. Let's pair it up with a liquid or two. Quite appropriate that we've got a beer that has so many different flavor profiles in it. We've got two different mods going with two different flavors. So we're gonna pair a couple. The first one here is from Punk Juice. It's uh, one of their salt liquids. It's a uh, raspberry lemonade. It's called Pink Bomb and it is a real nice raspberry lemonade. I've been enjoying this very much. Should go well, I reckon, bit of raspberry lemonade with those sort of citrus flavors, the orange and the uh, the blueberry. Let's fucking see. Yeah, that's going down a fucking treat. Very nice. Raspberry, lemonade, citrus, complementing the fruit and the sour elements of this beer very nicely. But as I said, we've got another one going. In the RDTA, I have a bit of banana ice cream from Sticky Fingers down here in Australia. One of my favorite sort of dessert flavors. Real nice creamy banana flavor with just a hint of sort of uh, chocolate in there as well. Should go well, I think, with that fucking more bakery element, the coffee cake mixed with banana. Coffee and uh, banana, that should go fucking well. Let's uh, mix it up all over again. 
Yeah, fuck, a completely different uh, mixture on that one. The coffee flavor is coming out a lot more from the beer when you're mixing in a bit of that creamy banana. The chocolate element going nicely with that bakery and that coffee cake fucking flavors. That's uh, a complex fucking beer. You almost want to have a couple of liquids to pair with to get the full experience. But anyway, enough waffling over this shit, dickheads. Let's get down the up and bloody close. Lots to cover on this one. Plenty of options to run this guy. Let's get in there and have a sticky beak. Oh, fucking righty then. So, if you go for the basic kit, this is the packaging that you will get. Inside of that, you'll find the mod itself with the BVC pod installed. You get the BP pod, user manual, and a USB Type-C charging cable. Now, if you go for what they're calling the special version, you'll get a large flat sort of black box, and inside you'll get basically everything that you could possibly run in the Nautilus Prime X. So you'll get an array of the original BVC coils, which are the ones that sort of go in the original Nautilus tanks, uh, ranging from 1.6 ohm to 1.8 and 0.7. Then you'll get a bunch of the BP coils, which are the more modern sort of uh, coil that they use, a 1 ohm, a 0.6 ohm, and a 0.17 ohm mesh coil. And then you'll get two very sort of micro RBA options. One will go into your uh, BP sort of uh, type pod, and the other one is for the BVC type uh, pod. So again, very small, compact little RBAs. And then you've got all the pods. So you have a pod for the BP coils, you'll have a pod for the BVC coils, and then you've got a, uh, a pod for the RDTA type uh, pod, which is you know this one here, where you've got a big tank in the bottom, and then kind of an RDA type top to it with the uh, the coil legs dangling down. We'll have a look at that closer in a moment. You'll also get a 510 pod, so you put this one in instead of a, a tank system, and you can just run whatever atomizer you like on the top there, just a, a standard 510 connection. You'll obviously get all the other usual stuff, like a uh, USB Type-C cable, you'll get um, a bunch of spares, 510 drip tip adapter, if you want to run your own 510s instead of the uh, um, 810 size drip tip that comes with the uh, RDTA, uh, and you also get some adapters for pulsing and pinching the uh, RBA coils. Uh, the drip tip that the uh, RDTA comes with, it's not this uh, short black one that I've been using, it's this uh, Ultim one uh, that's uh, pre-installed, kind of matches with the uh, the Ultim tank section. So plenty of fucking stuff with that uh, special version. But let's just get on with having a look at the device itself. So they come in a bunch of different sort of colors and uh, finishes. This is the, uh, the black and uh, red version. So they all have kind of like a, a leather or it might be might be fake leather, but it feels pretty good. Uh, you've got black bodies, you've also got gun metal bodies. There might be a silver version as well, or at least there's these two. Uh, and you've got some more sort of natural brown leather finishes, look a bit sort of lost vape-like in the way that they've done these, but quite classy, I think, quite a nice looking uh, product in terms of the uh, the overall aesthetic on it. So you've got a fire button on the side here, kind of a similar position to the way you'd have on like a billet box sort of on the side there. You've got your positive and negative buttons down the bottom there. Around on the front, you've got the screen. It's a vertical screen. We'll have a look at the chip shortly. And you have some airflow control. So when you're using the BVC pod or the BP pod, you're gonna have adjustment of airflow via this little lever here. And you can dial it into a really tight, restricted kind of mouth to lung airflow or wide open, it's pretty fucking airy. So the air's sort of coming in through here, I think, and then uh, getting restricted via this lever, uh, which sort of cuts off the air or opens it up to the coil underneath um, where the air goes in. You've got a little window on this side so you can clearly see how much liquid you've got. Now, it'll hold four and four and a half mils, depending on which coil you're using. So the BVC coils, four and a half. The BP coils are a bit bigger, so four mils on that one. There are, I believe, some TPD uh, versions as well, which might be slightly different, but pretty good for everybody else. You've got a 510 drip tip up the top. Both the BP and the BVC pods have a, uh, a 510. Uh, connection, so you can put your own drip tips in there if you like, and uh, a USB Type-C port down the bottom. It does charge at up to two amps, which is pretty fucking quick. On the bottom there, you've got uh, a slide-out battery cap, so you flick it, pops up, nice little spring on it, 
little gold-plated terminal there, and there is a marking down in the bottom to tell you to put positive end in first. Single 18650, as I mentioned earlier, so nice that it's a, a removable battery system, and you can just change out the pods like so. You just pull it, and uh, there's your terminals down in there, and you can kind of see that airflow adjustment sliding like so. So then you've got the pod. This is the Nautilus pod, and uh, it'll take your uh, standard BVC coils. You have a little connection or a base that you need to thread your coil into. So you can run all of the old favorite Nautilus coils. Those that have been vaping uh, for a while would know that the Nautilus is one of the longest running series of coils of any kind. Uh, people have been vaping on these for must be nearly a fucking decade now. Must be at least seven years. I know that when I first got into vaping, the Nautilus was a thing, and I've been vaping for seven years. So they've been around a long time, and they are a, a very a very much a favorite with a lot of people. So if you like that BVC coil system, well, you use this BVC pod, and you've obviously got that BVC uh, threaded or, or compatible rebuildable deck. So that's this guy here. It's got a little 510 connection on at the moment so that you can pulse and pinch it, get your uh, coils all glowing. Uh, on the top here, you've got a chimney. You take off the 510 to uh, install it. So it's a very compact little RBA there. You're going to put a single coil in and then obviously you have tuck your cotton into those little channels there. Very small, very condensed little uh, RBA top. So you take the bottom off of it though, you take your pod, you'd obviously take out this coil, and you just thread in that deck. And there you go. It's an RBA that's compatible with the uh, BVC pod. You've then got your BP pod, uh, same as the other one I should have shown you, filling it on the side here, little silicone connection, and uh, you just pull this coil straight out. There's no threaded base or anything you need to screw the coil into, that you just put your, your BP coil straight in. That's sort of more modern uh, coil from Aspire. So then you've got that BP compatible RBA. So you've got uh, a slightly different connection to this one. You need to unscrew that bit and then connect it to this little uh, adapter, which comes in a spare bag that threads onto there. So then you can pulse and pinch your, uh, your coil. Uh, and again, it's a very small, condensed little uh, RBA deck. You've got little uh, juice channels down the side there, little uh, screws to tuck your uh, legs into. Very, very small, but compatible with the BP uh, format. And then you'd obviously put the bottom back on once you had uh, pulsed and pinched your coils. And then that guy just goes straight into the pod. So pretty similar. I don't know why they really bothered with two different RBAs, one for the BP, one for the BVC, because they seem like they're going to be pretty sort of similar. Um, and if you've got both of these pods, you probably don't really need an RBA for both of them. But hey, they've done it for both, which is always great, uh, giving you plenty of choice as to whether you use the BP pod or you use the BVC pod. How many fucking times I'm going to say those bloody letters this video? So that's that. That's those two pods. You've then got the third option, which is the RDTA. So this is a little bit different in that it sits up above the uh, the rest of the mod. Doesn't sink down in there. You've got a, a tank down in here, and you've got like an RDA type deck on the top. You've got an 810 size drip tip. It's a much bigger chamber. You're able to use much bigger coils, and obviously uh, you want to get that airflow going with that uh, bigger setup. You've got some AFC on the side here, little ring which you can just twist. If we can get it to twist, there we go. Little ring there which adjusts your uh, airflow. And then if we pull off the, the top cap, you can see the deck itself. Uh, the way the airflow works, pretty simple. You've got a kind of Altum uh, ring here which directs the airflow through those little sort of chutes, one there and one on the other side. They are angled downwards, you can kind of see. Maybe if I take the drip tip out, you can probably better see that. So the airflow is being sort of directed downwards, uh, getting maybe underneath the coil, and does give you some pretty good flavor. Uh, much bigger deck, obviously, than the other RBA options. 
You've got uh, two big flathead screws there to secure your coil. And then you have a filling port here, which is quite cleverly done. You push down on that little uh, divot there, and that will allow you to pump juice into the tank underneath. There's a little uh, airlock release hole over on this side, and uh, it sort of seals up, so you're not gonna have liquid kind of pissing out of that hole because you've got to push down as you're filling it to, uh, to open it. And uh, you can put a nice little alien in there. This little alien comes to me courtesy of uh, Fat Kiwi Coils. Uh, this is uh, one of these single coil aliens. So it's a pack of two, but uh, they're designed for single coil applications. Three strands of 27 gauge nichrome wrapped in 36 gauge N80, 2.5 millimeter inner diameter, four uh, and well, four and a half wraps uh, coming in at 0.2 ohms. And uh, this was a, a really great little fucking vape. Very, very tasty. Beautifully wrapped little alien there from Kiwi Coils. Just perfect for this sort of application. Nice little single coil. I lifted that coil up a bit from where it would sort of land in the, uh, in the deck there to try and get some of that airflow getting underneath it. Uh, I think I started with it quite low and the flavor definitely improved once you sort of uh, pulled the coil up. Uh, it wasn't the easiest thing to install, but it wasn't too bad. If you want to see how I did it, then uh, check out the link in the description to the live build stream I did, and you can see how I uh, wicked it and how I installed the coil. But definitely pull your coil up, making sure obviously you're not touching the Ultim, but getting some of that airflow go underneath the coil. And it does have a sort of a little locking section or bit you want to kind of get it into so that it in, just locks in nicely. It's a bit tricky to be honest sometimes, but you want to get that airflow uh, to uh, line up and then roughly it should snap into place. Keyword is should. <laughs> These screws here have got to like slide into that little gap in the Ultim and it can be a little bit of a, a pain sometimes. There we go. Now it's in its spot. So uh, yeah, if you're into RDTAs, uh, and then it's going to be pretty familiar to you, but I've found it to be uh, a pretty effective little uh, tank um, RDA type vape. So let's have a look at the menu system. At the moment, I'm in auto mode, which is going to basically automatically adjust the wattage when you connect something uh, according to the resistance. So it's given this coil a rating of 15 to 25 watts, which is correct. It's the 0.6 ohm uh, little uh, BP coil, and that is the, the rating that uh, Aspire have given it. So quite good for the newbies in that you don't have to worry about overcooking your coil uh, by accident because it's gonna automatically uh, give you a, a set sort of rating and adjust the wattage accordingly. You can then go and sort of adjust it and dial it in. It is in uh, 0.5 watt increments, which I do love to see. Always nice and easy. You got a percentage and a battery bar up the top there. You got a little locked unlocked system. So if you give it five clicks, it will uh, shut down and then five clicks to turn it back on. But uh, if I hit it one, two, three times, yeah, it will lock. Um, so you can't actually adjust these by accident, but you can still fire it. So three clicks to unlock it. Uh, underneath that, you've got the mode. As I said, we're in auto, got the rating for the coil, uh, wattage. You then have the volts being applied, uh, your resistance, and you have the amps being drawn and you have a little puff counter underneath that, and then something to tell you the length of your last vape. To get to the menu system, you're gonna hold down positive and negative for a few seconds. You've got the mode, so if you hit that, you've then got the choice of wattage. So that's just your straight wattage from one to 60 without any auto. Uh, you've got a voltage mode, we click into that. We can adjust in 0 0.1, 0 0.01 uh, volts. So very, very accurate on the uh, voltage output. Uh, from 0.5 volts all the way up to 8.4. So it's going to give you the sort of full uh, range of voltage if you're into uh, you know using voltage rather than wattage. It's got a bypass mode as well, which is going to run it similar to a mechanical mod in that it's just going to give you the raw voltage in your battery cell. So at the moment I'm at four volts and that's what it's going to, uh, to dish out. You then have a choice of color on the theme. Just a nice little uh, extra there. It's not necessary, but if you want green or red or blue or purple, you can uh, you can choose your own little fucking uh, color scheme. You have a screen brightness function. Always nice to see. You can adjust that. If you don't want it super bright, you can dial it down, but it does have a, a pretty good uh, brightness to it. Um, I don't have any problems seeing everything on the screen clearly. 
Uh, so that is about it really. Chuck it back into wattage mode. Does go up to uh, 60 and it will round robin down to one watt. So there you go guys. Nothing too fucking uh, crazy on the menu system but it does have I think everything that you kind of need unless in of course you're into temp control. So that is about that for the Nautilus Prime X dickheads. Loads of ways to fucking use it, almost too many, but if you want something simple, then just go for the standard kit. But if you do want all the other bells and whistles, well, you do have that special kit as well. So plenty of fucking choice which uh, you can't really complain about. So that about fucking do, dickheads. Let's jump back up top, wrap all of this up. So there you go, dickheads. What a fucking plethora of options for this little guy. Whether you go for the simple kit, you're still getting two pods, or you go for the fucking special kit, and you got enough fucking shit to keep you busy till next year. But let's talk about the pros and bloody cons. What do I like? What do I fucking dislike? Well, we got to talk about the fucking choice. There is so many different ways to use this thing, both with the two different pre-made coil options, but then three different RBAs uh, to go in here, whether it's the BP, the BVC, or the RDTA uh, tank system. Uh, plenty of fucking options there to suit whether you want low wattage, mouth to lung kind of stuff, or right up to 60 watt kind of uh, single coil alien stuff like I was using with the RDTA. All work really well. The BVC coils always been fucking great, very popular with uh, the old school vapors, and then their new BP coils uh, are fucking fantastic. I'm using one of the little uh, 0.6 ohm at the moment, 20 watts, let's bump it up a little bit. So the performance off of those BP coils, I really like. The flavor's fantastic. You can dial this thing down to a proper mouth to lung kind of uh, draw. Get a nice little throat hit on the back there when uh, you tighten up that airflow with a little 20 milligram salt liquid. So really love the performance off of the coils and uh, the RBA deck, really good as well. The flavor off of that single coil alien that I was using, fantastic. Airflow is nice and smooth and no trouble with the wicking either. Also found it not to be particularly leaky for an RDTA, which can be a bit of a problem with that sort of style where you've got the tank underneath and the coils and you know the rest of it, but I didn't find it to be too much of an issue. So yeah, performance, fan-fucking-tastic across the board. I really like the look of this thing. I think it's nice and compact, especially if you're using it with uh, the pre-made coil or one of the RBAs that fits into the pod. It's nice and small, it's compact, it doesn't look shit and cheap. It's got kind of a little bit of a classy look to it with this sort of brown leather and uh, gun metal. I like the chip that they've put in here. Plenty of options there to cover all the bases that I want. Things like uh, wattage and voltage mode, but you've also got bypass. And for those newbies, that auto function really handy for just taking the guesswork out of what wattage should I use or um, the, can I remember what the wattage rating is for that coil, just put your pod in and it'll fucking tell you what the wattage um, you know, should be used at. So really, really good chip, uh, easy to fucking navigate, couple of little extra things in there like being able to change the color and the brightness. So overall, can't complain about the chip. I always like to see a little battery percentage. It's a, it's a little thing, but I like that. Fires down to 0.1, gives you 60 fucking watts and gives you the full sort of uh, 8.4 volts. Yeah, really fucking uh, decent overall. Single 18650, removable, uh, I like that, not having to uh, wait for it to recharge, you can just swap it out on the fly. USB type C charging though, so if you do need to just uh, get a bit of juice on the go, it'll get to you quickly. Uh, 510 drip tip, I always like the ability to change my own drip tip. So many times we see these sort of all-in-one pod systems where it's got an integrated tip, you can't change it. But if you want to, you can swap out your own custom drip tips. Decent capacity, four and four and a half mils. So what do I have to really complain about here? Fucking not much, to be honest. They've really kind of covered all of the bases. Uh, quite extensively. There's not much I can think of that they haven't given you the choice of, uh, of doing. The only thing I could really point out in terms of cons is the RBAs that they offer don't really give you a true mouth to lung kind of option. They give you a good control on the outside of the mod. You can really restrict that airflow down, but you can see obviously with the RDTA, that's not going to be something for mouth to lung with the side airflow. And those two other little RBA decks, the one for the BVC and one for the BP, both of those have a relatively open kind of airflow underneath the coil. You're looking at a good sort of two mils, 
maybe two and a half millimeters, uh, maybe three millimeter hole, but certainly nothing around that sort of one millimeter mark. So if you're into rebuildable uh, sort of coils and you like a mouth to lung with a real kind of true mouth to lung restriction underneath the coil, none of the RBAs are really gonna give that to you. And there's no option to swap out the pin to restrict that airflow down. So that would probably be the only letdown uh, and thing that uh, Aspire have kind of missed. You can still get a mouth to lung drawer out of it, but you're not gonna be able to restrict it to, to a sort of true authentic mouth to lung experience where the airflow is tight right underneath the coil. But apart from that, I really don't have anything else that I could find to uh, whinge about here. So what's it gonna set you back? Well, they're not uh, too bad. If you wanna go the basic kit, you're looking at about 50 bucks US, 40 bucks I have seen it going for uh, on a few sites. So if you're just going for the BP pod and the BVC pod, uh, no rebuildable sort of options there, 40 bucks, you can't fucking complain like that. If you go for that special edition full fucking kit with all the bells and whistles, you're looking at around about $100 US, which is pretty good when you consider you get three rebuildables, you get a 510 uh, option there to run your own atomizers, you get both of the other pods, a whole heap of different coils uh, in various uh, sort of wattage ratings, all the adapters that you need, so fucking 100 bucks seems pretty good value for something just so extensive. I can't really find much at all to fault Aspire on this. Good price, really, really well thought out. So uh, yeah, I could sit here and fucking waffle on about it, but I think you guys can see they've done a pretty bang up fucking job. So on that note, I'll get the fuck out of here. I'll put the usual Instagram and Facebook links down in the description if you want to see what this Muppet gets up to outside of the YouTube videos. If you want to support my channel, please do. Hit the like, hit the subscribe button. They're always fucking free and they help me out. But if you really want to keep me behind the lens, then think about hitting some of my support links. As I say every video, I don't take payments for making reviews. There's no sneaky jumping the queue fees or any kind of sponsorships from vape companies. I want to make sure you're getting a truly unbiased opinion on a product. But to keep doing that, a bit of public support is how I pay the bills. So hit my Patreon page, the special content vlogs on there each week you won't see here on YouTube as well as all the extra gear I get. I've got a spare one of these little Nautilus Prime X's and I'll be passing that on to somebody because those cunts keep me doing my fucking thing. But if you can't, that's all good. Sit back, sub on me fucking dicks off or your bloody tits off. I don't give a shit what you're vaping on, whether it's a BP coil, or BVC coil, an RBA, an RDTA or something fucking else. As long as you're not banging the bloody bungers, that's all that matters. Cheers for tuning in. Cheery fucking oh. Amundsen Breweries over in Bruggen, Bruggen, Bruggedeer, 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 Brugg